do? What's wrong? Nothing. I just I feel like Madonna with this on. Oh well, you're better than. Better but you don't than have the cone, you know, right. metal cone nah. bra thing. So but that's at home. And no, you're not quite as ripped as she is. I mean, she's got those <laughs> like Tyrannosaurus Rex arms. Have she you could, seen her arms? She lately? could kill a man. She could. She has. Tear your head right <laughs> off. Shall I just walk out of here while you guys talk Sorry, about Madonna? Sorry, you go right ahead. Make the make introductions <laughs> for everyone. You guys, Clayton Morris, you know him from his long-term podcasting. Uh, you're on Fox? On Fox. Uh, Fox and Friends, which is the show that I do on the weekends. Yep. And I cover technology for Fox News Channel, of course. And, and yes, the podcasting network, you know, it's great because I've been able to step back with a new baby in the house and watch these other shows on grizzlyproductions.tv emerge. You guys were talking about social interaction. We just launched an autism show. And that's not something nice. that I'm, you know, it's not near and dear to my heart necessarily, right. but the community has just been embracing the show. And it's really interesting to watch the way in which these communities, these niche communities that you might not necessarily pay attention to if you're not involved with it, really take off. And so it's been, it's been amazing develop. to see, yeah. you know, that show that we just launched. You know, Very we, interesting. we've talked to a bunch of people in the last, you know, day and a half uh, about different things. But one theme that keeps resurfacing is uh, it seems to be you don't have to do something mainstream in order to have success. And in fact, you know, for example, autism, you know, as a topic is not something that that everybody would just think about doing a show on. Right. But it affects a lot of people. If you're personally affected, if you have a sibling or a uh, you know, someone who's affected by it, maybe you'd do it. But but I imagine you can get a pretty decent audience going. Right. Yeah, and I would imagine, I mean, you certainly know this, if you if there's a certain topic that someone finds more interesting, right. maybe something that you've you've tweeted out that say, oh, I, you know what, I am having that issue with uh, mm-hmm. moving stuff over to Mountain Lion or I want to move this from this server. And, you know, then you're like, then you pay more attention to those things. Yeah. And so you can create a really, I think, valuable community and provide real value for those individuals. The two hosts of the autism show have an an autistic child. One of them's a board certified analyst, but they're very active on Facebook. And you know, those things are just tools, right? Facebook's just a tool, Twitter's just a tool. But when the community, when it all comes together, when all of those tools come together to form form real value, that's what interests me. It's not just one place. Are you just on Google Plus? Are you just on Facebook? It's how does that whole thing become part of the, the conversation? And the same goes for television, right? I mean, right. I'm on the air doing a broadcast. Maybe I'm checking Twitter back and forth with viewers and listening in that way to what they have to say. But then I'm also providing links. I'm also listening to what they want to be talking about on the air. And so, as you know, you're sitting here watching a chat room. Right. It's a whole communication. It's that whole ecosystem, right? Yeah. And so at Grizzly, you guys have launched a few different shows, including the autism right. one. Uh, what else do you got? So we have a comic book show. So <laughs> two guys, uh, Leonard and Todd, these guys buy every comic book every week. And these guys are crazy. So it's called uh, the Weekly Long Box. And they're in the comic book. And it, the idea behind them doing the show was we wanted, they wanted to be able to have a conversation like you're just in the comic book shop with these two guys. And they're like, did you just see The Walking Dead last night? Did you see this? Did you see that? <laughs> And it's really that kind of experience. And that community is probably not going to spill over much to the yeah. autism community, but it doesn't matter. There may be yeah. a little overlap, but, but again, that's like diversification. Right. Yeah, exactly, let's which talk has about, been a big, big topic. Yeah, let's talk about um, uh, this thought of starting up these shows mm-hmm. and, and producing them. How are you doing it, and what are your expectations for you know, launching these shows? Do you think they can... You know, grow their own audiences and stand alone as individual shows. Are you looking at at uh, you know uh, distributing yeah. the cost across a, a whole network of shows? What's your thought there? Largely, I mean, from some of the distributive costs, yes, across the the network at large. I think these each of these shows have to have their own audience, and there's yeah. not a lot of spillover. So the idea, well, do we create a master feed for all of the shows? Right. Is someone really going to listen to the master feed? Sure, we should make it available, right? Because it should just be out there. Yeah. But is someone going to be listening to all the shows, a mommy show? Probably not. A comic book show, right. an autism show, a sports show that we, you know, probably not. So I think each of these shows has their own unique audiences, and they're very loyal. And when those, go, those particular hosts go out to an event or something, and they see somebody, they're, like, they've got a lot of great followers who listen to their comic book show. Yeah. And... Um, 
you know, create that unique audience. Was it a conscious effort to span the genres, or did it just kind of happen? No, you know, and we're, we've sort of cultivated things. You asked about putting all the work. It's like the, 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 the creating of those shows is got to have great audio. It's got to have great production quality. And if we took a year to get the autism show right, I mean, back with beta tests of the audio, making sure that we could, and we felt like, all right, we're going to launch it in beta. Even after seven months, these po <laughs> really, they were experts, but they had no broadcasting mm -hmm. experience. And so, you know, trying to create it so that they felt comfortable, that yeah. the audience was going to respond and all of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, w it was all sort of breaking down how we were going to separate it and do different shows here with different content and making sure that they were all quality, you know. Yeah. How you so obviously you come from the TV background right. and you you're also spanning both worlds. How do you see, you know, how TV has adopted the internet side of things? It, has there been a real change there? I think there's been a faux change. I think it's been a real frustration. <laughs> it's a good way to say it. You know, it's been a real frustration. You you guys out in front on this, you know, and the way that people can get access to to great content and they're not having to worry about the cable box, yeah. right? They're not having to worry about old media. Right. So you have these old sort of dinosaur ways of looking at things that are, can be really frustrating and not willing to evolve the way that we would like them to do. Um, so I don't like the sort of lip service, and it's, it, it can be hard, right? Just tweet us and let us know your thoughts on that story. And coming up next, we'll have this. Yep. It's, it becomes sort of lip service to Twitter yeah. and the sort of these tools. But when you can try to really cultivate a relationship, I would love to you know, have more Google Hangouts before a show, hey, here's what we have coming up on the show. What do you want to see? Um, and then tweet us throughout the show because I'll, I'm going to be on a couch with a guest. I'm not going to have time to really be doing a Google Hangout again. And it's there's still a lot of friction okay. there. I think they just don't fully know how to take their monetization machine and convert it to this new technology. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, on one hand, I think I'm just waiting for Fox and ABC and NBC to snap up some big online communities right. and own them and let people who are driving those businesses start making decisions for them. But then a lot of people would argue, well, the opposite would happen. They'd buy it and stifle it. And I think we're right. about to find out because Revision 3, who you know distributes our show, um, was just purchased by Discovery. Right. And so we're going to find out really quick what happens when a big network right. uh, takes a, a hold of a, a hot internet property, if you will, and we'll see which way it goes. Yeah, what are the fears there? I mean, I'm curious. I mean, what is it that you get more distribution and then it becomes a sort of a sold out thing, you know, where the, the community that was there feels like, oh, now that it's on every channel, now it's not the thing that I discovered. Or is it now? This is great. Now I get to see it everywhere. I think I think we're past the point in the in time where people have this territorial feeling over their discovery of well, the podcast. And I think also that yeah. with Revision Three specifically, all of those shows are generally big enough big, that yeah. it's kind. Of, you know, yeah. it's, it's not. It doesn't feel like oh, I'm the only one who knows about it. They feel like everybody right. knows about it. What's it's no big deal. I think the bigger fear there is. Is Discovery going to come in and they're like, okay, we paid however much we paid for this. It's not a significant, huge investment. Um, it's a trial. And they may or may not put as many resources into developing new content and trying things with it and pushing advertising advertisers to it. And if it doesn't work out, eh, it wasn't that big of a deal. Let it die. You or know? does it become a launching pad for... You know, does you take a really hit show on on Revision Three? Then does it go to the to the network? Does it go to cable? As that's a, a big question. Of that, yeah, know? that's a big question. Yeah. Or vice versa. Maybe and certainly, we had that experience because Geekbeat went from online to TV, but it went to a small network. You know, right? Who knows? It seems to work. They, they tell us we're their number one show, but we don't. You know, how do you know how it would perform on another network sure. and whether it's a good fit for that network, etc.? Who knows? Right. We'll see. Yeah. I think Mark's given us the the timing jab. Uh, already? Yeah, it's just You just never. got on here. Uh, I know. Thanks for squeezing me in, though. I was just uh, flipping by and checking out some cool companies. And glad to see so you guys. We are so glad you were able to join yes. us. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for having me. And so where can everybody find all of the stuff that you guys are doing? Uh, yeah, you know, just always on Twitter. Just Clayton Morris on Twitter. Uh, that's where I do most things. I sort of point everything to Twitter again. You, yeah. know, you go through this love-hate relationship. It just comes back there. It's and so then, easy. Google Plus. Yeah. And, and I love Google Plus, too. I hope they API Google I.O. Then that way uh, I can push things out there. Yeah. But 
But um, go to grizzlyproductions.tv and pick a show that you might like. You know, there's sports, comic books, all sorts of nerdery. And by the way, and check not... out that Overblog thing because yeah. they promise to integrate everything and bring it onto your site. We'll so that see. might be yeah. an easy way to just throw out free. one domain. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah, yeah, and it's free. If we're trying, I'm going to check it out. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask them about Grizzly since we're livid. Lobster. Oh, yeah. I was, I was curious where the name Grizzly came from, and then I thought, I really don't have a place to ask you yeah. because right. of our name. Because our name is so ridiculous. <laughs> it was, it's bizarre. I mean, my best friend and I, when we were kids, we would used to draw comic books, and it was this grizzly bear egg, and I drew a grizzly bear, or an egg, with a cape, and it was zip the ghost egg to frighten grizzly bear eggs. It was the most bizarre thing in the world, and when we were coming up with it, we were just like, that works. And it's so bizarre that people always we, scratch their head as to what We have found a mind that right. outweirds yours. That's right. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. That was hard to do. <laughs> Power and strange minds. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. We Thanks, appreciate it. It's great to see you. I'm going to back to Madonna. Yes, Yes, awesome. that's right. Yes. <laughs>